Evening guys, it's out in the backyard. I'm gonna try some primitive clay pottery. Something I've never really tried too much. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is to just share my experience and maybe there's some people out there that uh, might wanna try this. Or if there's people out there that know more about this than I do, you know, leave a comment. So I got this clay from a field uh, just behind my house. There's uh, quite a few steps involved in uh, doing this and I always like to compare it to um, the bow drill fire. There's all kinds of steps and variables and in, until you do everything right uh, your end result is not going to work out. And I have a feeling it's going to be the same thing with clay uh, what I'm doing right now is I got a large rock and then a small rock and I'm taking the clay and I'm grinding it into a powder. I'm also removing any rocks, any organic matter, twigs, grass. You want to make it into a fine powder and that's what I'm doing right now. So I think I ground my clay fine enough. The next step is to add a temper. And what that is is a, another material added to the clay and this kind of acts as a binding agent. I heard you can use all kinds of different things like um, cattail fluff, seashells, sand. And I uh, also heard people say that you don't have to use a temper. But what I have here is some seed heads from Canada Thistle. It's all that I have around. I don't have any cattail fluff at the moment, so I'm just going to use this. I'm going to use a ratio of uh, 2 to 1, 2 parts clay, 1 part fluff, and just see how it works. Pretty messy stuff. So on my rock, I put a rhubarb leaf. This way I can work on my pot and rotate it. I accidentally added too much water to my clay mixture. So I had to grind some more clay and then add it to my pile. I think I'm just gonna need it like this for a while. It's one of those things you need lots of patience for and I'm not sure if I have the patience. But something I want to learn for survival purposes, it's a skill I, I hope I never have to use and I doubt I will use, but what this does by practicing is it kind of gets the, the learning and uh, the mistakes out of the way. That is looking pretty good. It's going to make a simple pot. I don't expect it to look pretty. Just have a little piece of leather and I'm dipping in the water. So while I'm at it, I'm going to try making a couple more bowls. This one here, I didn't quite take as much time grinding the clay into a powder. I want to see what kind of a difference it makes. And the seed heads from the thistle, I just added a, a little bit less. So I just want to try a couple different things and see if there's a difference in the final process.
All right, we are ready for the firing process. This stuff here is what me and the kids were working on a couple weeks ago. We didn't take the time to process the clay, we were just having some fun. So I'm gonna fire these. And these three pieces here, I worked on yesterday. I hope they're dry enough. Guess we'll find out. That's where I'm gonna be having the fire in. I got uh, some chipboard. On the bottom, that's my base. It's kind of like an upside down fire, I guess. And I got some wood here. Got a bunch of wood shavings. I got my pottery all spaced out. Wood shavings. Wood on top. So let's go for it. is never let a good fire go to waste so I'm making some char cloth while I'm at it. These are been fired. I can see some cracks in some of these and I think this is the one my most hopeful piece. I put the most work into this one and it's got a crack right there. Would not hold water I don't think but Considering this is my first time, I think it all turned out pretty good. I think this one here, I just didn't let it dry enough. Those four pieces back there, they sat for at least a week. These three pieces here sat overnight. So I think the next time I try this, it'll be more successful. You can listen to it. Pretty cool.